It's as if we've wandered the desert, travelers without a home, together yet alone in this 
uncertainty. An uncommon time, unexpected, undefined, binds us, unites us, does not divide us, but reminds us of who we are. A body, not a building, unrelenting, unyielding, persevering, revealing the faithfulness of God. Maybe this virus has started a fire inside us, ignited us, inspired us to live louder, love harder, care deeper. Six feet, six miles, or a world apart. Our calling remains the same. For we are the body of Christ. Declaring that we need your healing, we need your touch, we need your comfort and your spirit, God. God, so no matter what we feel in our hearts in this moment, we declare that healing is here. We declare that there is a bomb in Gilead.
Hey everybody, it's Roscoe here, and I'm with Mr. Sam. Say hi, Sam. Hey, it's so great that we were able to worship in the building this past week with Voices of Hope. Um, even though we're socially distant and not back in the building, it was so nice to be able to just see the smiling faces um, and be able to sing in a space and be able to have that time with each other together. Now more than ever, we need your help in making sure that we can still keep that message of hope peace and love alive there are several ways that you can actually give the first is through realm or our website at cathedralhope.com you can also use the text to give option or you can actually mail in your giving and offering as well too we thank you for all the support that you've given us through this time and we hope you continue to do so until we can be back in the building in some form or fashion worshiping together again have a great night.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we're thankful for this day and for this opportunity to gather once again in worship, uh, Pulse, on this Wednesday night. We're grateful for your Holy Spirit that we celebrate in this season of Pentecost, and we pray that that fresh wind of your Spirit would fall afresh on us this day, in our worship and in our own personal lives, that by the manifestation of that same Spirit, we might have ears to hear and hearts to receive and lives to respond to this good news of a God who journeys with us this day and in the days to come. So now, gracious God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and that the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, that they would be ever acceptable to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And so our worship in Pulse over these next few weeks will be reflecting on the music of our era, the music of worship and the music that has so inspired and so transformed people's lives. Music is important to us at Pulse. If you haven't already noticed, worship and music go hand in hand, and through the celebration of music, they enable us to rise to the occasion and rise to the generation in which we find ourselves. Last week, Reverend Andre concluded our worship series by reminding us of the ways in which music touches us, inspires us, lifts us, transforms us. And so often in worship, we use music as a way of bringing us to a place where we can worship authentically and with a sense of purpose. Our scripture reading comes from the prophet Amos in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. And the prophet reminds us that justice is called to flow down like rivers that bring about transformation. I'm paraphrasing but Amos reminds us, as we must be reminded today in the era that we find ourselves, that we must always call forth justice, justice that falls and flows like streams of living water. 
Those same words were also echoed by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as he proclaimed justice for a particular generation and for a particular people. And we find ourselves now, even in this moment, having to call upon those words of inspiration, those words of truth, those words of liberation, that we call forth justice for our world, a world that is in turmoil, a world that has been turned upside down, and a world that I believe has lost its way, lost its way in the truth and freedom of a God who created us and a Jesus who redeems us and the power of a Holy Spirit that always transforms us. In this season, in this day, in this worship experience, we call ourselves to be those streams of living water. And the song that we focused on in our worship today came from the movie Selma, Glory, when we remind ourselves of these African-American folks who are fighting for liberation, fighting for a better world, fighting for a new day. And whilst that is said in the 60s, here we are in 2020, still calling for that justice to fall down, to flow like rivers of living water that are called through the lives, not just of black folks, but are called through the lives of anyone who calls themselves a follower of Jesus a follower of the way, calling ourselves to be those miracles of justice, that the justice that Amos wanted to flow like living streams of living water are not just those that flow naturally, but those who flow in our bodies, calling forth the freedom of God's people, the freedom that we all are in this together. We're in Dallas, Texas, and for many of us, we have experienced curfews over these last few nights as black and white and brown folks have walked together shoulder by shoulder, calling forth for that justice to flow down. And whilst we know that there has been unrest, there is a wind of change, there is a wind of a move of Holy Spirit that cannot be stopped if we continue to live into the prophecy of that glory, if we continue to live into the prophecy of a Jesus who always calls us to set the captives free. The music, the music of worship, the music of our culture can inspire us. I remember the music of the 80s and the music that was so inspired generations, my generation, to call forth for this justice one more time. Music has always been used to inspire, not just for worship, but has been called to inspire generation after generation. I'm sure there are some of you who remember the rock and roll era, but music goes long before any of our generations. It was the music of the book of Psalms, 150 chapters of chants and, and music that called forth and inspired David. Music that inspired scripture by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down, yea, we wept. Those words come from scripture. And in the 80s, in the AIDS pandemic, I remember as Reverend Dr. Jim Matulski would say to us over and over again, the hymns and the chants of the AIDS pandemic, get up, act up, step up, and step out. I remember a famous sermon from Reverend Jim Matulski when he said, oh, I love those old choruses. Those old choruses that call forth something within us, that stir us up, that cause us to rise up, that cause us to step up, that call us to step out and to make a difference. The prophet Amos calls us, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King calls us, the words of Jesus call us, Gandhi calls us to rise up, to step up and to step out, and today the wind of change of the Holy Spirit calls us. And are we listening? Are we asking ourselves the deep questions of what it means to be human beings, what it means to be people of color in our country? Are we responding from a place of privilege and using our privilege to raise up, rise up the voices of the oppressed, the voices of the marginalized, the voices that are so often left behind? Cathedral of Hope, we're a predominantly white church, but we must rise up, step up, and kneel if necessary to remind this world that black lives matter. And in this song, glory, glory, one day glory will shine forth where all people are liberated. 
It is the chant that we must use in our worship. It is the chant that we must use so that justice might fall down, flow down like streams of living water, both in the time of Amos when the Israelites were oppressed, in the times of the gay liberation movement, which was started by a riot in a bar in New York City, and in the days that we now face to rise up, to find glory, and to find the music that will inspire us and call us forth. It is the work that Jesus calls us to. It is to the work that Jesus would call those early disciples to rise up, to subvert, and to be in the mix so that all people would find this good news, not just those who people believed were worthy of it, but that all people would find this good news, this rise up, this glory, this setting free of God's people. And you and I, we are called to that work together. We are called to it not just because of culture, we're called to it because of the work of Jesus. We are called to it because of the work of the prophets in the Hebrew Scriptures who knew what it meant to be set free by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down and, yea, we wept as we hoped for a better land. Christians must weep as we anticipate and call forth a better land, a better people a better way, so that the words of the prophet let justice flow down like streams of living water, and not just words on a page decades, thousands of years ago, but are relived and inspired, and they rise up within us so that we are called forth to make this earth look more like God's heaven. That is the work of people of faith. We are not called to follow culture. We are called to be countercultural, to lift the voices of the marginalized, to lift the voices of those who have been oppressed so that all are set free. Black, brown, set free. We live in interesting times. People have often said to me, are we living in end times? We're always living in end times. Because when we think we've got it right, God has moved on and is calling us, beckoning us, challenging us, and calling us to use the words of Scripture, the inspiration of our music, to create yet another wave of crowd. That is our work. In our worship, we don't just come to raise our hands in praise. We come so that the music would inspire us and call us to a better human being, to call us to be better for the world, to call us to be in the likeness of Jesus himself. And if our worship doesn't do that, if our music doesn't do that, if our relationship with Jesus Christ does not do that, then perhaps we need to go back and to reread the scriptures that called forth the Israelites to be set free from Babylonian captivity. Perhaps we need to reread the scriptures when Jesus would, would confront the religious hypocrites of his day. Perhaps we need to read our own history in our own country and the privilege and the systemic racism that has been embedded in it for decades and centuries and call forth a rise up to a new way, a new life, a new world, a new creation. Look, I am making all things new, said Jesus. And we're still in the business of making all things new. Glory, glory, one day, one day we will find glory together. And until we find glory together, until we find our likeness in Christ as human beings, one with the other, until that day there is work for us to do and our worship inspires us to do it. So rise up. Find the glory within you that is inspired by the music that is inspired by our sacred text, that is inspired by those who have gone before us and take our place at the table. For until all are free, then none of us are free. Free, free, free at last. Thank God one day we'll be free at last. 
May we find our inspiration in our worship this night. May we be challenged by our sacred text this night. May we be challenged by the Pentecost spirit of the wind of change that always calls us to rise up, not just for those who look like us, but for all in the image of Christ. Amen. One day when the glory comes, it'll be ours, it'll be ours. And one day when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure. Against, yes, glory is destined. Every day, women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us, freedom is like religion to us. Justice is just positioning us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. The sun died, his spirit is revisiting us. True, it living, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walked through Dallas with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Shots swing on the ground, the camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop and we ran up. One day, when the glory comes, it'll be ours. It'll be ours. Oh, glory. Wow, what an amazing worship experience that we have shared again this evening here at Pulse at Cathedral of Hope. And I sincerely hope that it has fed you and given you that spiritual lift that we all hope for uh, during the weeks and months that many of us have felt this isolation. And so we go into the rest of this night with gratitude and with praise, with a commission to rise up, to speak up, and to find glory for all. But most specifically, in this current era, we say one more time, loud and clear, Black Lives Matter. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ.